Hey everyone, welcome back to another Kevin's Creations here on Geetopia Island. I'm Kevin. And I'm Cardwell. And we're back today to showcase a brand new deck from the brand new set called The Seventh. And yes. this set is totally awesome. My personal opinion, I think it's one of the best sets that Force Will's ever made because it has a whole lot of like good functionality within itself. Um, there's a whole lot of checks and balances in the set in just in general of what the cards do, which is nice and it's actually kind of different because they haven't done that in a while. So good job Force Will for getting things yeah. correct that's how you control the power creep to be honest yeah checks and, and balances yeah no like rnd did real well on getting all the checks and balances because yes a lot of these cards can get out of hand but one ruler gets to say no to a lot of it or like half of it and it, it just it's it's good that way also this ruler this set a lot of the the new rulers are all tag team rulers again but where the other set that had tag team rulers and failed was those were all super strong because they got extra things that enabled them this one has extra things that like hurt them a little bit but it's not terrible it's like livable what they do um and what i mean by that is like you can play one this one spell or you can you started less life so forth so on um and we're playing two of those rulers because you know we're show them angels off. And you have to yeah yeah exactly um but before we get into it guys we remind you that we do have a patreon the link is down below go check it out it takes just a dollar to give us some love and support we greatly appreciate it and in our Patreon, you'll find access to our videos early. You'll find access to our Discord and all the other fun perks we have in there. Also down below, you'll find our FOW Grimoire, which is our uh, database that we made for the Force World game. And it's it's a really good database just to look up cards and like see what's banned in Wonder, see what's banned in New Frontiers, and just make a deck and do it on the fly if you need to, or just put things together. And thankfully, we already have this new set up and running, so go ahead and take your shot at you know making decks, send oh, them yeah. to us. It's super fun. Oh yeah. All right, guys, we're going to delve into the deck called Life Size Bites. So we're playing Bitey Girl and the Buddy Belial because, mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're really good. And I think they're going to be two of the strongest rulers in the next set just in general because of what they do. First up is Bitey Girl, Carlina. Uh, she is the green-black ruler. She judges for a green and a black, energized green and a black. Tag Fallen Angel. Uh, you can play only one spell per turn. So that's her drawback. But you gain... Produce two will of any combination of any color. Yeah. So you're like, cool, I get two free mana. Pretty awesome. And then Gluttony pays zero spells you control with total cost four or more cannot be canceled this turn. And then whenever card four or more is put into the field under your control, draw two cards. Pretty card's insane. Just so good. Like, sure, you can only play one spell, but I'm going to make that one spell good. Yeah. Or big. Because that's what she does, is play big, bitey dudes. Um, and then, so her judgment side is a 9-9 nine -nine flyer with barrier two or less. Uh, prevent all damage will be dealt to this card by Resonators 2 or less. So she like totally has Barrier 2 or less, which is kind of cool. Yeah, she just eats them up. That's yeah. how quickly they are. Um, if this card would deal damage to a J Resonator, it deals double that much instead. So again, she's about gluttony, so she's all about eating things. Um, and then she play one spell a turn and produce will in any, any combination. So she still has the two abilities on the back, but it's a worthwhile like thing just because you get two free mana. Exactly. All right, the next one, of course, like we said, is Belial. He is also a black and white uh, tag team of Fallen Angels. He judgments for a, a white and a black. If you would set your starting life, uh, set it to that much minus 2,000 instead. So it's the opposite of before, where you're actually half your health. Yeah. Resident your tokens you control get in plus two, plus two, and Bane. And it has the Fallen Trigger. And Fallen Trigger means if you do a judgment, then this thing triggers. So, or a God's Art. You cannot lose the game, prevent all damage that would be dealt to you. And then God's Art, Zero Pride, just draw a card. Simple as that. Yeah, cool. I mean, you get to not lose a game and then you draw a card. Yeah, pay zero, I don't lose and prevent all damage dealt to me this turn. I'll take it. And Seems, I draw a card. Yeah. Sounds good. Seems awesome. Now, when he flips, he has an 8 8 fly. Uh, Resonant tokens you control get plus four, plus four, Bane and Drain, so a little upgrade there. And then enter, put two, four, four, Lightness, Darkness, Fallen Angel Resonators with flying onto the field. So flying, Bane, Drain. I eights, it's really rough. And then it has the fallen trigger of you cannot lose the game, prevent all damage that would be dealt to you in this turn. So. so yeah, note on his, if he's flipped, you have to have the Carlina on the front side to make sure you can protect him. Yep. Or get the fallen trigger, because otherwise you're not going to get it. And then when you when you judgment for two, you have, what, 16, 24 damage? <laughs> yeah, you have three eight eights. Sweet. It's ridiculous. All right, so the first guy we have the deck is Makage Reya. Because why not? Yeah, she's back. She's going to be back for a good while because this whole set is Darkness Rulers and she's really good in Darkness decks. Go figure. Uh, so one black, four, four, flying quick cast. Enter, search your deck for a Darkness card, put it into the graveyard, and then shuffle your deck. Vampires you control gain drain. Those are the only two abilities that matter. 
and she's really only here to get one card and one card only really but i'll get to that card in a little bit yep the next one of course is nidhogg we're already jumped in the four slot it's two white two black 12 12 flying you gain barrier your personal self and then enter look at your opponent's hand choose up to two cards and remove them from game and when he leaves game then you give those cards back but you're still destroying their hand on turn two with yeah. a 12 12 flyer yeah next is makage sejiro he is a green and three black he is a 12 12 with flying and precision Whenever resonated dealt damage by this card is put into the graveyard, put it into the field under your control, it gains darkness and a vampire, and then enter, put it in pain in him any amount of life. You this deals damage to target resonated equals that life. So essentially if this dude comes into play, you pay life, you kill the dude, and that dude comes into your play under your control. And if you have Makage Rayum, then you don't pay life because he has drain. Yep. Perfect. Murdered Maid of the Despairing Voice is a 10-10 for three blue and one. It has null. Enter, put all non-magic stone, non-J ruler entities your opponent controls with total cost three or less at the bottom of the owner's deck in any order. And then you pay blue, discard this card, return target resonator with total cost three or less to its owner's hand. Now, Null is uh, still back in the day where if it triggers when you have no cards in hand. Simple as that. Yep. And all of Carlina's cards have really good extra support in them because, yes, mm -hmm. they're a big dude or a big body, but they also have a pay a the mana and discard it and do something else so that way they're not just a dead card and you're not just stuck on just one spell you still yeah. get to interact and do things but basically free spells from yeah. one uh next up is hunting angel <clears throat> there's two white and two for a total total flyer enter destroy target resonator your opponent controls you gain life equal to its defense or pay a white discard this card destroy target attacking resonator fall and trigger whenever you gain life this card deals that much damage to your opponent so you're playing belial so all your tokens that have drain they get to do free damage. Yep. And also, you can just have Belial. I just realized it comes into play in response to that trigger. You God's Art that turn for zero to draw a card, and then you kill a dude, and then you take that much damage. So very, very powerful yeah. card for sure. And this one is Demon of Explosions. It is three red and one. It is a 12-12 flyer, or not even a flyer. He has wings. Come on, guys. <laughs> Enter. This card deals 1,000 damage to target player or j -Razaner. so... Bam. Or red, discard this card, deals 500 damage to target player or res J Res in air. Simple as that. Next up is an old school dude that we haven't seen in, a, in a, quite a hot minute. Yep. Uh, Behemoth, he's three green and one for a 15 15 pierce. When this card enters the field or whenever it attacks, remove target addition or regalia from the game. Whenever this card is put into the graveyard from the field, put all cards from all removed areas that were removed by this card into the field under your control. So mainly you're playing this against the Demonic World deck. You don't have to because it's still good. It gets a lot of additions, like all the silly castles right now. But in the same regard, you're just like four mana. I have a 15-15 that eats your stuff. Yeah, just trounces through. The next one, of course, is Bone Dragon. It has five black, 17-13 flyer. You may pay a black less to play this card for each Darkness Resonator you control that's put in the graveyard this turn. And then enter, put X44 Darkness Zombie Resonators in the field where X is the number of Resonators in your graveyard. This really helps with the ones that you discarded earlier. And you just have big old, big old tokens with Drain and Bane. Yeah, and Belial Mixture Tokens, super good. Yep. Uh, next is the Corpse Eater Dragon. He costs two black and two for a 10-10. Uh, he's got flying. Enter, your opponent discards two cards. One of his cards is put into the graveyard from the field. You may remove a resonating engraver from the game. If you do, return this card to its owner's hand. And you can pay a black, discard this card during your turn, and your opponent discards a card. So this dude's super good because you're playing like one dude a turn. So you're going to have a dude and they're going to have a way to kill it, but that dude gets to come back to your hand, so you always have a threat. Exactly. <clears throat> and to destroy their hand immediately. So the next one is uh, <clears throat> Garon. It's two green, two black, and one. It's a 15-15. It has swiftness, precision, and flying. Your opponents cannot play spells with total cost one or less. And then for a green, remove this card from your hand, uh, cancel target spell uh, with one or less, or black, remove it from your hand and destroy target resonator with total cost one or less, which can come up very quickly and pretty awesome. Yeah, no, this dude is single-handedly going to change how the format's played just yeah. because right now there's a whole lot of one drops being played in, in everything. And he's just like, no, I'm going to pay one green and not care. It cancel. And if I'm on the field, it'd be good luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next is Fallen Angel of Black Tears. She's three black and two for a 12-12 flyer. Enter, J resonates your opponent controls, gets minus X, where X is the attack of this card. Pay a black, discard this card, J resonator, gains minus four, minus four until the end of turn, draw a card. She's super That's strong, because you're like, hey, I pay five, kill the board, because most things aren't going to survive 12. Yeah, no, not at all. 
Next one, of course, is Demon Pride and Greed. It's two green, one black, and three. <clears throat> the 16 16. When this card is put in the graveyard from the field, you may put a non chant card with total cost five or less in your hand in the field. And when this card is discarded by a spell or ability your opponent controls, put it on the graveyard instead. Uh, put it well, from your graveyard in the field instead. Yeah, so you get a free dude if they discard it. Yes. And then when it dies, you get another free dude, a five drop. <laughs> Seems, Seems awesome. Seems good. Uh, and lastly, we have Kusanagi Motoko. She costs seven. Yep. We're playing big dudes. Why not? Why not? Uh, she's a 14-14 with Swiftness, First Strike, Flying, Barrier, Drain, Precision. This card cannot be canceled. And Quick Cast. And Quick Cast. Yeah. So, I mean, you don't have to do her God's Art to play this card. You're just like, cool, I pay seven. Or in this mana, you pay like five <laughs> yeah. or four. If you hit the right stone, you only pay like three mana to play her. Neat. It's kind of disgusting. Yeah, and just do it on the turn, and then you hopefully just win. All right, the first spell we got, of course, is the Castle of Beatrice. Is one blue and black edition. Cards not named Castle Beatrice in your graveyard cannot be a target of spells or abilities and cannot be removed from the game by effects as long as this card's in your graveyard. That's pretty awesome. Blue and a black. Put a resonator from your graveyard in your hand. Play this ability only if this card is in your graveyard. So you literally just want to get rid of this as possible. So you remember Makage Rea? This is what you go get. Yeah. You're like, cool, put this in the graveyard, turn one. Don't target my stuff. And the best part of that card is all those silly discard spell cards. But you're like, cool, discard this. You just end a turn, you're like, I'll pay a black and a blue, get it back to my hand. Yeah. Neat. I have more spells. Yeah, just instantly, like, okay, I'll discard this over again. Thank you. Yeah, you're like, cool. Uh, it, it doesn't get back Garion because he removes himself, but like the Hunting Angel and the, the other ones, you're just like, cool, get, do this over and over and over. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Uh, the battle comes to an end and then it's two black and one. Name a card, search your opponent's deck, graveyard, and hand for all cards that share a name with the name card and remove it from the game. Your opponent shuffles their deck. I loved this card the moment it came out back yeah. in the day, but it, it was it, it costed a whole lot and it was super hard to play. And everything that won is like two or less, so. Yeah, but now you get two free mana on turn one. So you literally call a stone, <laughs> play three mana, and remove four cards from their deck. Yeah, they're game winning cards. It's yeah. like, that is out of here. Thank if you. somehow Violet is viable now, which I don't think she is as much anymore, but if she is and you know you're playing Violet, you're just like, cool, pay three mana, go get Bahamut's. Yeah. Buy your dragon, get out of here. Don't care. There goes half your win con. And like, they don't get any bonuses or anything. It's just all removed, gone. Yeah, Thanks. cool. Great. Thanks. Next one is Prideful Rule. It's one white and two. Quick cast, you may pay two less to play this card if your life total is 2,000 less, so it's immediately av available. Destroy target non-magic stone entity. Put a 4-4 light darkness uh, fallen angel resonator flying onto the field. So obviously, you know, it just works with Belial. But as he said earlier, it can play in any deck. Yeah. But even still, it's a one mana kill spell. Yeah, exactly. Like, cool. Neat. One mana kill anything, get a dude. Uh, next is table manners. It is two green and one for a uh, chant. Destroy a J resonator unit that has a sh that has or shares the highest total cost from among all J resonators your opponent controls. You gain life equal to the total of its attack and defense. Then you draw cards equal to its total. Oof. Pay a green, discard this card, target J resonator you control, and target J resonator your opponent controls. Deal damage to their attack to both to each other. So this card is insanely strong. Like, yeah. Regardless of what you're doing, if you're playing green, you should be playing this card honestly. Because if you play it, cool, you get to kill a dude and draw cards and gain life. Yeah. If not, you're like, cool, my dude fights your dude, and I get better. That's it. And if you have a Makage Seijiro and have a way to keep him alive or bigger than their dude, you're like, cool, I get free counters and your dude. Yeah, exactly. Or just one green. My Bane token here is going to kill your big dude, <laughs> yeah, and I don't care. It's it's disgusting. This card is insanely good with with Carlina and Belial. And just green in general, like you said. Yeah. Just super good. Okay, the next one, of course, is Makage Seijiro Game of Dreams. We've seen this before. It is a black, green, green, black. Uh, each player puts all resonators from the graveyard in the field, then each player banishes all resonators not put in the field this way, which can be so good, as you know, because <laughs> all your discard dudes. All your dudes are probably going to be bigger than their dudes unless they're playing Carlina too, then that card gets very terrifying. Yeah, for sure. Because you're like, I don't know what's going to happen. But... That's when the sideboard comes out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could be interesting. Yeah. Uh, next is Castle of Carlina. It is a green, black, and two. Enter, search your deck for a card with total cost five or more, reveal it, and put it in your hand. Entities you control cannot be banished by spells or abilities you control. Your opponent's control. Spells you control cannot be canceled by spells or abilities your opponent's control. Ooh. And then entities you control four or more gain barrier. <laughs> yeah. 
protect your dudes. I honestly am not sure how you deal with this card if it's in play. Yeah. Because it's kind of disgusting. But like Carlina had to have this card, otherwise she's not nearly that good because yeah. you're only playing one spell a turn. You have to have a make sure to way to protect your stuff. Yeah, and by turn two, all your dudes are super protected and cancel. Can be canceled, can be hurt, can't do anything, then yeah. Mm -hmm. Super solid. All right, the next one, of course, or is this you? This is you. Did I, oh, whatever. Katrina of Hunting. It's uh, two green, two black. It says, destroy all J-Resonators other than J-Rulers you control. Recover a J-Ruler you control if this card was awakened. Destroy all additions, just in case. Awakening. Re rest a recovered J-Ruler you control. You may play this card as though it had quick cast if you rest a recovered J-Ruler you control as an additional cost to play this card. So basically, if both of them are tapped as this spell is played, you get to do whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this card's super good because it kills all the dudes and it can kill additions. Yeah. So basically just boards wipe them all their side, which mm -hmm. is pretty nice. Uh, Belial's Rule, it is a black one and two for a uh, chant. You may pay two less to play this card if your life is 2,000 or less, which probably will be. Remove all non-token resonators from the game. Remove all card, re remove this card from the game as it resolves. Uh, then this card gains players cannot chase God's art abilities you control as long as this is in your removed area. <laughs> So you're like, hey, cool, don't counter my ability or don't respond to me being like, hey, I don't lose the game. Yeah. That's what that says. And it's pretty awesome. Sweet. Thank you. That's pretty sick. Uh, they've made some new stones for this set and they are super cool. Like all of them have a lot of good use. Uh, the first one is Amadeus, the Holy Crystal. It is produce a white and tap produce one wheel of any attribute. Play this ability only if your opponent controls two or more J rulers. More often than not right now, that's probably going to happen. Yeah. Like, there's only a few other one single rulers I think can survive right now. And if it happens, then so be it. But otherwise, that you should probably be playing that one. For sure. Next one is Ruthopia the Bloodstone. It is tap produce a black or tap banish this card until the end of game. You may play all God's art abilities of fallen angel rulers you control played this turn uh, or played this game an additional time. So it's pretty nice because it allows you to God's art one more time of all your dudes. Yep. And if, yes, if you have multiples of those, you get each one that extra time. Kind of disgusting, but it's kind of like, if you're having a God's Art more than once in a game, it's kind of bad for you, because I don't know, something something, was, something they, went wrong. They got you on the ropes. Uh, next up is Ragnar's Fiery Stone, which is an older one, but you're playing Carlina, so you have at least two men on turn one, so it's not terrible if you hit it turn one. Yeah. But uh, if you don't control uh, Ragnarok, it comes untapped, and then calling a Magic Stone doesn't cause your rulers to tap, and then tap produces one will of any, any attribute. Yep. It's great. So once you have it, Carlina just gets to free, add free mana and you don't have to worry about it. And it also makes sure that your, your dudes are always untapped for the Magic Stone of the Six Sages, which everything's multicolor right now, so you might as well just play it because this is literally like the best stone right now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, enter, recover, ruler you control, produce a colorless, or produce one will of any attribute as long as you control an untapped J ruler. You have two J rulers, so one of them is probably going to be untapped. And this literally untaps it for you. So. And this way, if the, this comes out in turn one, you can add four mana immediately and <laughs> yeah. have five turn one. This with Carlene is kind of gross because you're like, cool, <laughs> add mana, trigger this, Untap, add mana, neat. Trigger. Yeah, thanks. I have four mana on turn one to be like, hey, cool, here's a, here's a five drop turn one. Yeah. Enjoy. Thanks. Bye. I, it's a thing. It's, it is a thing. We'll see it as a thing. Yeah. Um, overall, though, this set's super fun. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of com decks come out of it in big tournaments. Uh, I'm going to Minneapolis. I'm pretty excited about that. Or Minnesota. It's pretty. I'm pretty stoked about it. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be weird because yeah. everyone is at the same point of this is a whole new set to make things be shaken a lot. And that's what the best thing about being a brewer is at the beginning. It's like, what can we, what jank can we throw out there? Yeah. This is the one tournament where you're like, Jank might actually do work because <laughs> yeah, it can. for sure. Um, but that's it for the deck, guys. The deck list will be down below. Go check it out. Leave us a like down below if you like it and let us know what you think about it and let us know what you're thinking about playing. For we'll sure. see you all again next time. Goodbye. Later. Also, guys, make sure you hit that like button down below and subscribe to our channel and then hit that bell for any future notifications that you have for our videos. Let me go ahead and give a big uh, thank you to our fans for over the years, especially our Mythic and Above Patreon followers. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, with that, we love you. Thank you for your support.